there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Bundles and today we're going to be talking about phishing or fraudulent or spammy type of emails. Uh, the reason that I wanna create this video is because a lot of people that follow me do have businesses or are interested in starting businesses soon. And when you start businesses or when you are starting anything um, and you're actually generating income, uh, a lot of different companies or people will see that and try to take advantage of, of you or compromise your information as far as hacking into your systems, getting your customer information, or trying to um, somehow get access to your business accounts or you know your funds somehow. There's just a lot of different things that people try to do to take advantage of other people. And so email phishing is definitely one of the uh, ways that people do try to gain access uh, to your information and also to your client's information by sending emails like this. So I get lots of emails like this. I'm sure a lot of you do as well. And I just want to point out some of the key factors and points on emails that can help you kind of identify which emails are uh, legitimate and which are fraudulent. So before we get into the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up please make sure that you are subscribed and let's get right into the video. So like I said, this email came to me. Um, now, the first thing that I do want to point out is, you know, use your best judgment, you know, use common sense and use discernment. Um, first of all, the first thing that stood out to me is Square Dispute. I don't use Square, so I know that this is not a legitimate email. <clears throat> There's a few other, excuse me, a few other things during you know this video that I'm going to be pointing out. But the first thing that you want to do before you click on any links is you do want to make sure that the email, I mean, you want to read through the email first. So if you don't have a Square account like me, I don't use Square, then you know that this is not truthful. So um, the image at the top right there, I don't know if you can see it, but it kind of says, what does it say? Online image. Um, that's not really a square logo or symbol or anything like that. So that's another thing that kind of stood out. And then it also goes into detail, um, you know, just saying, hello, customer, you accepted a payment of 545 from a card ending in 3309. However, the charge was disputed by the customer as unauthorized. The dispute amount <clears throat> will be um, deducted subsequently from your square balances. Your square balance at the end of each business day will be sent to you via email. So again, um, if you are, you know, if say you use Square and you're wondering is this legitimate or not, and you didn't catch the um, online image logo uh, portion and, you know, nothing else stood out to you as being fraudulent, then you could go ahead and check your orders and see if you had an order from a card ending in 3309. Uh, typically, when you receive orders from credit cards, depending on the payment provider that you're using um, or, the you know, the payment source that you're using, they will have the last four of the card number available. You won't be able to see the entire card number, but you'll at least have the last four. So check to see if you even have had a transaction from a card that ends in 3309 recently. I'm going to show you something else to look for. So also at the top of the email, um, if you click on the email address, it's going to give you more information. So as you can see here, when I received the email, it said from only response, which is another red flag because it, it should be from Square, especially if that's who's sending the email. Even if it does, you want to click on the email and see what it comes up as. So this email came up as austindave123 at gmail.com, which again is not a legitimate email address or it, it is a legitimate email address but it's not a legitimate square email address because if square is emailing you uh square is a pretty big company and uh you know i'm assuming square wouldn't send a serious email as far far as a, a dispute to you from a gmail account so you want to be cautious of that too i don't know who this email belongs to but you don't want to click any links. A lot of times when you click the links in the email, uh, either it pops up a virus or it downloads something on your device where the other user can have access to your files and information 
or you know it's going to ask you to send more information to this email address maybe bank account numbers maybe confirm your business account number and things like that so don't give out any of your information um, definitely use your judgment because a lot of companies um will well i wouldn't i don't want to say a lot most every company that i've dealt with if it's something regarding a dispute if it's something regarding a serious matter um, the email just doesn't look this way. It doesn't show RE review charges and changes in account. I mean, it just doesn't look this way. Um, and it doesn't ask for any of your personal information. I guarantee I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't want to say a hundred percent because I didn't click on the links, but I'm pretty sure if I click on the link, it's going to ask for more information or it's going to download something to my device. Um, so be careful on that. And then, um, like I said, you know, you can kind of see this link here. Who knows where that link goes to? But I just wanted to bring this to everyone's attention. I'm sure you see these emails, you know, daily, but there are some people that don't know what to do, you know, when they receive these emails. And I just want everyone to be as safe as they possibly can. You know, when you do something new, a lot of times you bring on new, I don't want to say new troubles, but you know, sometimes new things can happen as well. And so a lot of people are hip to, you know, business owners and different companies and they'll go on Instagram and try to search for newer businesses or they'll go and, you know, wherever they go to find your information and try to bait you into submitting your information or into opening their files. Now, also, I do want to put this out there that a lot of companies have their own phishing uh, or spoof department for emails just like this. So if you wanted to go another step above and contact Square and forward this email over to them, you could do that as well. So keep that in mind. Um, I wouldn't even reply back to this email. Um, when I was in working in the financial industry, a lot of times we would get emails to our email addresses as well because people would be trying to fish around and see who would take the bait? Who would be the one to open the, the, the link in the email that would give them access to the bank's information? Who would be the one that would reply back that would give them? So I really just delete these emails. I don't reply back. I don't click any links in the email. Um, I literally just delete it and go about my business. And before I click any links in the email, I make sure that it's legitimate. So I go over the email address. I go over and read the email to make sure that it even pertains to my business. So for example, even if it says too bad, check here, or even if it put my first name in it, it doesn't mean that it's really pertaining to me because like I said, I don't use Square. So I know I don't have any Square disputes. So if it's something like that, if someone's sending you an email regarding recent changes to your Chase bank account, you know, and you know for a fact you don't use Chase and you don't have a bank account there, don't take the bait definitely go ahead and delete the information. And what you have to be cautious of too is that now because you're running a business, um, it's not just your responsibility to protect yourself and your devices, but it's also your responsibility to protect your customer's information as well. And although their car, full card information and things like that are not available, you still want to make sure that you're protecting their full names, their addresses, their phone numbers, you know, any correspondence that they sent to you. And so you have to be extra, extra careful when you are in a position of running a business because all of that can fall back on you. There's so many companies that have data breaches over the years, and there's so many companies that you know you'll they'll send you emails and say, "Oh, our company was compromised again, and your information may be at risk." And you know, it's just it's it's a very important task, and it's a responsibility of every business owner to protect the information of your customers and to make sure that when your customers are shopping, they're shopping with a company that is safe. They're shopping with a company that is going to protect their information, and so. One of the, the biggest ways that you can start protecting is by going through your emails and choosing which one, uh, which ones are actually legitimate and also deciphering what information you're going to provide online. It's completely okay to, if someone emails you, even if you think it's the company, say this was Square actually emailing me and say they asked for my account number once I clicked a link. It's perfectly okay to say I'm not comfortable providing that information via email. Is there a support number that I can call? And then also Googling that number before you call to make sure that it is legitimate as well. So this is just a video, a reminder to be really safe and to monitor your emails. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.